Welcome to Damaging Ignorance. Damaging Ignorance is important because whoever controls your language of discourse controls your reality. Every story has two sides to it. On this show, we challenge the dominant discourse of the week. We challenge the dominant discourse not because our side is right, but because the other side is wrong. We offer you the actual position of things. And we are rarely wrong. And even when we are wrong, it is because we do not choose to be right. Today, we would like to tackle the three blind spots of Gemma. A blind spot is something we do not perceive because our vision is limited. And when we perceive it, we perceive it only very slowly, after it has passed. In other words, we see things or we don't see certain things. Mm -hmm. And when we see them, mm -hmm. we only realize that they have happened. Post facto. Post facto, yeah. after they have happened. Yes. Yeah. That's what we are calling blind spots in right. this case. Mm -hmm. And Gamma has quite a number of them. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, on to the first blind spot. So the first blind spot we would like to expose has to do with the Kikuyu trance. Are Kikuyus in an epistemic bubble or are they in an echo chamber? You're being very complicated here. Can you break <laughs> that down for us, please? <laughs> okay, so, so it's not very complicated. Let me distinguish between the two. An epistemic bubble is when one happens to be ignorant because they are unexposed to contrary views and information from the other side. Yes. But once they are exposed to those facts, they change their mind. Yes. An echo chamber is where one has made up their mind and does not want to be confused by the facts. So which of the two are Kiku suffering from? But before we talk about the epistemic bubble and the echo chamber, yes. you have framed the two issues. I want to speak frankly to the Gamma Nation and um, I want to do so because the Holy Scriptures have instructed us that it is better to have open rebuke mm. than hidden love. I want to speak openly to them also because the pastors have lost their prophetic voice. They become impressive bishops. Mm. They make prayers after they've been given a particular amount of money. And like the Holy Book also teaches us, when the prophets lose their prophetic voice, then the donkey is given life to speak. That was a case of uh, a prophet known as Baal mm. and his donkey. Because he had lost his way, yeah. uh, <laughs> as he was going to some space, yes. and he had lost uh, yes. uh, the, 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 the link with God, mm. the donkey basically stopped the prophet mm. and the donkey spoke mm. and told the prophet yes. that the following will happen to you. Uh, with the game of bishops and the ones who were supposed to be calling the house of Gemma to order mm. on moral issues, mm. when they are unable to do it, a donkey will have to arise mm -hmm. and it will speak. And I want to confirm yeah. that I have appointed myself mm -hmm. to be that donkey. <laughs> and I will be that donkey who will speak yeah. uh, truth to stupidity, mm -hmm. who will speak when we have gone wrong, especially so long as the House of Bishops mm -hmm. is not speaking. And I'm saying this because uh, when a community begins to demean their mothers, mm. as we did with Mamangina Kenyatta, mm. and we entertained all the vitriol that was uh, poured upon her, mm. and the House of Bishops did not condemn this particular act. Absolutely. Mm. When uh, uh, Phil Marshall Modoni, yes. 
uh, went to a fellow freedom fighter. Yeah. By the way, Mamangina Kenyatta, many people do not know this. Yeah. She was detained for a good six years. In fact, you are telling me that she's a second yes. sub, longest serving Something political detainee next to Raila Odinga. Yes. Uh, Bodoni says, Phil Marshall Bodoni says, that I need to cut the burden that I've carried all these years. Yeah. And uh, the only person who can do this for me yes. is uh, my fellow freedom fighter by the name of Mamangina, Mamangina Kenyatta. And goes there. And by the way, the cutting of the Maumau hair is, is a ritual that is very deep in the struggle, mm. the Maumau struggle. Yes. Mm. And uh, she went and uh, asked her to cut the hair. And then the Kikuyus made fun of this situation. Those who hold high moral positions, like the bishops, mm. even some elders, yeah. they don't come out to say, you cannot. Uh, strip your women naked, yeah, especially yeah. old women. Yes. You cannot strip them of their dignity and make fun of them yes. uh, the way they did. Yeah. And uh, also, going to Ishaweri is something that I'm still very uh, upset by yeah. uh, to basically desecrate the space uh, of uh, the founding father of our nation. Mm. And uh, while you are there, uh, you went and you told Uhuru Kenyatta, a man anointed of God, to be our leader because if he was not anointed of God, he would yes. not have been our leader. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in, uh, in Negema or in Ekoyo, a man appointed of God is to be held in very high esteem. Mm -hmm. okay. But you go there, uh, you pee around his compound, and then you tell him uh, he can remove his trousers and uh, give birth if he wants to do so, or lay an egg. I mean, uh, this kind of stuff yeah. was done right in our faces. And those ones who hold positions of high morality did absolutely nothing. Mm. And in a situation like that, a donkey will have to arise and bring the prophetic voice back. Mm. That's why I'm saying it could be me and I could be wrong on this. It could be a stone that will speak to us. Yes. But the House of Gemma, you're being called to order on some of these things. But before we talk about the epistemic bubble and the <coughs> echo chamber that you spoke about, yeah. you, mm. Kevin, eh? the other day you called <laughs> Kikuyu's stupid. And I think as a way of bringing everybody to order, you need to apologize to them. Be serious. <laughs> apologize properly. I'm sorry for calling you stupid. But now that you have apologized. Yes, but let me see why am I... Okay. So you have apologized. Yes, absolutely. An apology has been... Mm. I have accepted it on behalf of the community. Yes. <laughs> but why did you call them stupid? What was the logic behind your thinking? Profiles. Because so you could have done it differently. I agree. But on that day, I was very upset uh, by Kikuyu's. And I was upset because I felt that they had exchanged their inheritance for a wheelbarrow. And uh, when I say inheritance, uh, I, I, I mean uh, BBI. They had peed on it. And BBI, in my view, was a political insurance. It was a political will Uhuru Kenyatta was leaving to Gemma, right? Yeah. Now, if, if, if we were going to get 70, if Gemma was going to get 70 extra seats in parliament, okay. there's not a single motion that would have passed on the House of Parliament without Gemma coming together. Yeah. If Gemma was not allocated, if Gemma was allocated half a trillion shillings for the next 10 years, Raila Oruto will be in power. Mm. We would have sorted ourselves. Our children will be having scholarships like uh, like, like those ones of Northeastern they, that are taken to Finland and everything. Now we can only take our children to Muranga Teachers College. Mm. You know, uh, We will have, I mean, we will have had an extra 7 billion shillings in CDF money every single year because of the 70 extra MPs. And now it is gone. And now, the, and, and to think about it, 
Kibaki only did what? 85 kilometers in central Kenya? Mm. Kilometers mm. of road. Kilometers of yeah. road. He mm. only built 85 mm. kilometers mm. of road. And people think that Thika Highway no. was a miracle. It was a miracle. Uhuru Kenyatta has done 2,000 kilometers of road. That's the total number of kilometers Kibaki built nationally in his 10 years as president. Mm. And they don't see it. That's why I was upset, Prof. So you're upset because they were not appreciating. They were not appreciating what they cannot see and they're being told by, mm. by, by their, their new team god uh, that uh, Uhuru Kenyatta has done nothing for them. And they continue singing for him. Anyway. Okay, you had good reasons, yeah. but uh, maybe you should not have called them stupid. My thinking is that their actions <laughs> fall below the level of stupid. Mm -hmm. Stupid mm -hmm. is here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The actions and the way they have behaved falls below that level of stupidity. And here I'm talking like the donkey that I have spoken about. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying so because Julius Nyerere gave us a distinction yes. between kumbafuness and ujinga. Yes. Mm -hmm. He said that uh, stupidity yes. is temporary. Yes. Because all of us do stupid things. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And when we do stupid things, we normally come back and say, Oh, that was stupid. Yeah, yes. okay. And you do that because you have acquired some knowledge you yes. otherwise had not yes. had. Absolutely. And you got some kind of enlightenment. Yes. I said, all right, I am, I'm, I'm okay with yes. this. Yes. So when I say they are below the level of stupid, yeah. I'm talking about the description yeah. of Nyerere of stupidity and foolishness. Yes. Mm. So Kikuyus are not at the state they are in right now, they're not stupid. Yeah. They've degenerated to a place of foolishness. Mm -hmm. oh. And um, Nyerere taught us that stupidity you can cure. Yes. Foolishness is a condition <laughs> that you cannot cure. cure. It, is, it, is, it is incurable. It's, it's permanent. And uh, Paul writing yeah. to the Galatians begins by asking them, Oh, you foolish Galatians, <coughs> who has bewitched you? Yeah. Meaning that foolishness is caused by bewitchedness. Mm. It's a condition, it's a trance that you're drawn into, yeah. uh, and you're drawn into it uh, not willingly. I like you called it a trance. Yes. You're drawn into it uh, uh, because uh, of uh, you've been bewitched in a sense so you have mm. you you're under some powers mm. that are above you mm. <laughs> and in my thinking yeah. um, to describe the anatomy of our mothers yes in the most macabre ways that uh, the uda fellows did yes uh, and to demean them that is foolishness that is born of a condition that has been created by a force other than mm -hmm. uh, one that is natural. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying that uh, Kikus have been bewitched, but I think they're in a trance yeah. because a lot of the things they're doing right now are completely unexplained. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what do you think about it? Yeah. The other day we say that uh, we talked about the Freemasons. Yeah, right. Um, and uh, we also said, and before even talk about the Freemasons, uh, I need to go back just a little bit on the on the involvement involvement of uh, this particular group in our politics. Yeah. I was showing you the other day of a note, yes. a one hundred shilling note, yes. published in uh, July 1987. Yes. Mm with Arab Moy yes. mm. and he had a snake running around his, around his head yes. mm. um, and uh, we never saw that snake for a long time until it was pointed out to us mm. by the prophetic bishops. They yes. told us this does not add up but that was five years down the road. Mm. We were in a blind spot. Mm. We only saw it so, yeah. slowly and gradually. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. But that's when we began to mortgage our politics to the dark forces. Oh. And uh, uh, I remember that in 2000, the year 2000, mm. uh, the Mongiki Fellows mm. may be inspired a little bit by their spirituality, I don't know, mm. I, uh, you know. Uh, but uh, they came out and it is on record in the media, you read the standard of uh, 
uh, the years yeah. then. Yeah. Uh, they are said to have uh, marched to the Freemason Lodge yes. on State House Road, yeah. mm. and their intention was to go and burn it. They had mm. four oh. jerry cans of, of fuel to go burn it. Yeah. And the argument, rightly or not, mm -hmm. was that there was a snake mm, in that yes. particular lodge <laughs> that was being fed on uh, yeah. blood from uh, children. children. Yeah. It is in the public domain. Yes. Yes. Uh, that did not happen. They were not able to bring it down. But they were sensing some principalities that were yes. conditioning politics, yes. our politics. Yes. However, they went to a place called Kingongo in Nyeri, yes. and they managed to burn down the Freemason or yeah. Lodge yeah. then. Mm -hmm. Whether they were right or wrong, whether that was just being dramatic, mm -hmm. I think what they were saying is that we have mortgaged yeah. our morality, we mortgaged our political consciousness mm -hmm. to some extent mm -hmm. to forces that are a little bit on the dark side. On the darker side. Now, if the bishops, yeah. the House of Bishops, will not tell you that some things you cannot do, yes. mm. you cannot undress your mothers, mm. and you cannot, uh, you cannot uh, desecrate mm. certain spaces, mm. if the bishops will not tell you that, mm. and Mongiki is designing it, mm. yeah. oh yes. Then it means that basically something, something is really off there. Yeah. And that is how the donkey ends up being prophetic, yes, yeah. ends up speaking to you, yes. as opposed to uh, oh my goodness. holy men of, of God. So Kikuyus, yeah. you're not stupid. You're, you've degenerated into a space of foolishness, mm. and that foolishness, my hypothesis, yes. because you're not adding up to me, yeah. has been engineered mm. by deep spirituality. And on that, I could be so damn wrong. <laughs> and if I'm wrong, I don't choose Just to be right. right. So, yeah. Sorry, I should not have, I should, it's, it's a good thing. I, I apologize for calling them stupid. I should have called them. <laughs> it's because you have not read sufficiently. <laughs> 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 Nyerere and the distinction. <laughs> By the way, he used this to describe one of his ministers. Yes. Mm. You see, in this man, sio kumbafu mtu mtu ni mujinga. Wazabu kumbafu tuweza kutengeneza. Lakini ujinga hauna dawa yote. Hauna tibu. Hauna tibu ya aina yote. And so, the second blind spot is that Ruto has told Kikuyus that hustlers cannot be pangued. But what they are blind to is that they are the ones being pangward. Now, there's a story we like to give on this. There was once a Gemma bishop given money by William Ruto. Then he died. When he arrived in heaven, he asked whether this was heaven. And baffled by the question from a bishop of 30 years, who should have known where heaven was, St. Peter ordered the supporter to spend one day in hell and one night in heaven. After the experience, he was to choose which of the two was heaven. On the first day, Saint Peter put the Kikuyu bishop in a lift and lowered him deep down into hell. When the lift opened, he was astonished. Hell was actually beautiful. It was made up of all the things he was denied when he was a bishop. Free booze, beautiful chicks and sleigh queens, and booze galore. The next day, the Gikuyu bishop was taken to heaven. God was dead boring. This is when he discovered that hell is for company, including sleigh queens, and heaven is for the climate. After the experience, he was asked to vote. And like most Kikuyus, he chose hell. It was more interesting. Then he was put back into the lift and lowered back to hell. When the doors opened, the Kikuyu bishop was shocked. Hell had changed. There were no more blonde sleigh queens, no booze. All the things he had denied himself on earth had disappeared. 
When he asked what had happened, Lucifer replied, Yesterday we were campaigning. Today you voted. That is the difference. That is the difference. That is the story of Gemma. Uh -huh. Dear Gemma people, this is a story from the donkey. Mm. So today, UDA is campaigning. Yeah. Tomorrow, you will vote. Yes. Mm. Campaign is looking very rosy right now. Yeah. Mm. But when you vote, he will show you his colors. And hell will have changed completely. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. yeah. And you're already beginning to see signs of some of these things. Oh, yeah. Even before we get to hell and heaven. Yeah. There was a, a lady by the name of Susan Kay. I don't know whether this is true or not. Mm. Yes. Who is said to have been uh, called a mole mm. in mm. India. Mm. Of all people, I was hoping that Susan Kayaka would be the running mate to William Ruto. Because mm. that would make a very compelling uh, yes. candidate. Yeah. candidate. Yeah. But now they are beginning to turn on their very own yes. by calling her a mole. But William Ruto is not wrong. Kikuyus are basically oh, wow. snitches. <laughs> yeah? They are moles, and you do not know. Each time he walks out of a room, yeah. they begin speaking to each other in a koyo. You know, all manner of Kikuyu mm. things. All those guys in there, apart from Dindi Nyoro, mm. are snitches. Mm. And you will only discover that uh, with time. <laughs> and, and, and on that I must give to the Kikuyus, I, in fact, maybe uh, uh, they have discovered that today yeah. we are campaigning yes. and that's why they are being given all these rosy things yes. mm. and after they have voted, yeah. they will be shown hell, yes. yeah. the way it basically is. Yes. Mm. Yes. But I must also say, now I'm serious, yeah. let me get serious <laughs> on this one, I must say this, that Gemma is the only community in this country yeah. that is not allowed to organize itself. Yeah. The Luos are being organized by Raila Amolo Odinga, yes. the Kinara himself. Yeah. Kalenjins have been organized and they are under the pocket of William Ruto. Yes. The Luyas have been organized, they have their owners. Yes. But each time Gemma comes together yes. to organize themselves, uh, it becomes an issue of national uh, concern. Mm. They must not organize themselves. themselves. And as a result of that, historically even, uh, Gemma has been made to hate itself. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it must be noted on this that uh, the devil is made out of the things we reject of ourselves. Mm. The things that we do not like about us, mm. that's what the devil uh, is basically made of. I do not understand how uh, again uh, the community that fought for our liberation as yes. a country yes. uh, can accept its Kalenjinization. Mm. Hey. I'm even told that the methods they're using right now because Whoa. circumcision of women in Gemma is back. Yep. And the methods they are using are borrowed from elsewhere. Yes. Goodness, goodness. Uh, that kind of conditioning of the mind is very deliberate. It's exactly what the Muzungus did. Yes. They came, they conditioned your mind, yes. imported their culture yes. into our space. Yes. We all changed our local names and we, mm. we adopted English names. Mm. My name is Godfrey, by the way. <laughs> uh, and all of that was to condition the mind. Yeah. And that is what is happening right now in yeah. this period of darkness. In, uh, and this darkness also, I must add, mm. is one that is not logical. Mm. How does someone tell you, and this is what William Ruto is selling to uh, the Hustler Nation, and by the way, there are no other Hustlers in this country except the Gemma Hustlers. Mm. He's telling them that you can become what I am. Mm. Look at me. Mm. I'm a hustler, I began by selling chicken. Yeah. And in 30 years, I'm going to be become president. Yeah. president. And uh, we all saying, yes, it is possible. Yeah. But we're not looking at the probability of it. Yes. Yeah. Probability. The probability is one man yes. in 46 million yes. Kenyans yes. managed to move from selling chicken, selling chicken and owning a wheelbarrow yeah. to owning five helicopters yes. in 30 years. 20, so all of you 5.6 million gamer yes. voters, mm. 
are expected to move from being uh, hustlers to yeah. becoming what he is promising yeah. to you and the probability is yeah. one out of 46 million over a period of 30 years. Yes. This is what I'm calling a, a, a form of uh, blindness yes. and uh, I would want to confirm Absolutely. that uh, the German nation is uh, in uh, that uh, trans, trans. in that chamber in the chamber in the yeah. eco chamber, eco -chamber. The eco -chamber. Yeah. yes yeah so on to the third blind spot the third blind spot we would like to expose is that kikuyus are safe they are not safe under william ruto they are not safe under ryla either way and depending on the way they are behaving they are cooked Poiro. And this is because of their failure to plan and act collectively. Ryla will not destroy them, but Ryla will ask the question, if all you have given me is 820,000 votes, why should I give you more than one cabinet position? Yes. Under William Ruto, on the other hand, we will have Moism without Moi. Ruto will systematically dismantle the Kikuyu nation. The politics has many definitions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, politics uh, 101, as I taught my students, is about who gets what, when and how. Mm. So politics is about getting. Yes. Yeah. So if yeah. you don't get, you're yeah. not doing politics. Yeah. If you're told that Azimio has 60% Kalinjin and 40% mm. Luya, mm. Mm. Uh, mm. it yeah. means you're not getting. Kenya, yeah, yeah. You're not doing Absolutely. politics. Yeah, Kenya Kwanzaa Kenya Kwanza Alliance. Kenya Kwanza Alliance, yeah. 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 Uh, and uh, another definition of politics is uh, politics is uh, uh, the authoritative allocation of resources. That's right. But that's a complex one. Yeah. But one that is uh, a good one is that politics is a systematic organization of hatred. Mm. Mm. That, 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 that is how it is organized yes. and uh, the head commission needs to read a, read a book yes. because uh, hatred can actually be organized yes. in a way that it produces leaders and that is what politics basically is. Um, in this particular instance that we are in right now, the organization of hatred mm. is being done uh, systematically mm. and it's being done by the two leaders differently. Yeah. I am persuaded that uh, uh, Azimio mm. will not uh, hound Kikuyos. Mm. Uh, but I am persuaded that William Ruto will uh, hound Kikuyos hereafter. Yes. But Azimio also will not favor Kikuyos because if they have not voted for him, yes. for, for Raila, yes. uh, what's the justification, justification? For, for their place, the yes. for your place on the table? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. precisely. Is so Raila will just do what Tarap Moi did in 1997. Mm. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Kikuyus did not vote for him. Mm. Yeah. And for the first time in the history of our country, mm. there was not a single Kikuyu cabinet minister mm. in government. Mm. Yes. Mm. In fact, the first minister he appointed was Jeremiah Nyaga. 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 Yes, from Embu. And then, then he appointed... Later, much later. Reluctantly, he appointed yes. JJ Kamodo. Yes. And then, reluctantly, he appointed <laughs> a potato-eating Kikuyu, also known as a Maasai, yes. known as Joss Yes. For Gema was left out of uh, the fold for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, my point on this is because, and I agree with the blind uh, spot you're talking about, mm. because Gemma has not organized itself sufficiently, we are going to find ourselves in a place where yeah. we are locked out of government processes. And, yeah. and the, the peasants and hustlers out there will say mm. that it is not us who be locked out, it is you, the big people. Yes. But you're wrong. Mm. Arab Moi taught us that the important players in politics are not the biggest. Yes. It is a small watus. Yes. Mm. And what he did is that he went and destroyed all the industries mm. that were driven by the people. Yes. He went and destroyed the coffee industry, yes. so 
these Yama people were not right. able yeah. to take their children to, to school, yeah. to school yeah. and therefore were impoverished. Yeah. He went and destroyed milk yes. in the same order. Yeah. And uh, after he had done all of that, yeah. he moved on now to the biggest. Yes. Yeah. And the biggest included banks like uh, Ruro Urban, yes. mm. owned, by, owned by Andrew Ngomba, former mayor. Yes. Mm. A Jimba Bank, owned by uh, Jim Nambaru. Yeah. Mm. Union Bank, Continental Bank, which was part of the, yes. the Kikuyu elite from uh, Nyeri. Yes. He destroyed all of this. All of yeah. it. Including a company known as Mathu Paper, yes. systematically. Yeah. Yeah. And then he handed all of his opportunities to the Indians. So when you say that uh, you're safe in the hands of William Bruto, mm. <laughs> and from the word go, mm. he has told you 60% is us, and I'm the one representing you, yes. so yeah. Ruto is a Kikuyu president. Yes. <laughs> William Ruto come out. <laughs> and the 40% yeah. goes to, uh, to Musari and Mudavadi. Uh, that's a total delusion. And, and I'm saying this also because yeah. you remember a story that was given to us the other day mm. in Gikoyo by Captain Kongo. Yes. yes. Captain Kongo was um, Jomo Kenyatta's favorite nephew. Yeah. And Captain Kongo uh, was the one who accompanied the body of uh, the founding father yeah. from Mombasa when he died yeah. mm. in an Air Force aircraft yeah. into Nairobi. Yeah. And when they arrived in Nairobi, they went to State House, and those days, State House, the operational language was Ekoyo. Mm -hmm. So they gathered in a room, yes. all the, the courtiers, the Jomo courtiers, yes. uh, to ask, so now how do we advance after yeah. we have buried Jomo? Right. Or we have a constitutional situation we need to deal with right now, yeah, how yes. do we advance? Yeah. And uh, so they discussed this in Ekoyo, but at the corner there was Arab Moy. Yes. Mm. Fimbo. With his fimbo, mm. you'll sit at a corner quietly holding his fimbo and a Bible. Yeah, mm. yeah? <coughs> praying, you know, mm. and fidgeting a little bit as this kikuyu are discussing mm. his fate. Mm. Then the Hugo said, We have the numbers, yes. mm. which was a fact, yes. and we have the money, yes. we are the owners of industry. Yes. This man will just be our puppet. Yes. A little did they know that. Uh, more he understood Kikuyu yes. and he spoke a bit of it or maybe they knew that and they were just spiting him. Mm. Then they were stopped by a man called Josiah John Joe, the father of Charles Nojo, according to Captain Kongo. Mm. And this man told them, you have given away the government plus the guns yes. to this man. Yes. And you are saying <laughs> that uh, you will protect yourself using your money, using your money and your numbers. Yeah. He told them, because these were younger people, yeah. that you are better off giving your women mm. to this man yes. and giving him the government and the guns, yes. the guns. because he is going to come for you. Yeah. And uh, they dismissed him and said uh, Arab Moor is just a passing cloud. cloud. The cloud passed for 24 years. Whoa. And the rest is history. history. That's right. Gamer people did not plan very well during the Moi succession. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And as a result of that, they suffered for tremendous losses for 24 years. Yeah. And uh, my persuasion is that right now, mm. They are not as uh, organized. Yes. Mm. If I right now, they are more disorganized than they were yes. in 1978. Yes. In 1978, yeah. and uh, they may laugh and uh, hustlers. In fact, we should allow them to go vote for William Ruto, oh, yeah. mm. because when the time comes, they're the ones who will cry. Yeah. And uh, so, the, 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 if you have to read a bit of history, the situation we are in right now is exactly what we had in. Mm. 1978. Because Moi with his fimbo shaking in a corner like this yeah. and holding the Bible on the other hand yeah. knew how to fix this Jamaz. Yes. Yeah. And fix he did. And fixing he did. He yeah. did. Yes. Now William Ruto is a student of Arab Moi. Absolutely. And he studied those methods, especially methods on how to deal with the uh, Galibo. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, yes. Yes. In all individuals, Galibo Kikuyus. And he has uh, uh, arrived at the scene, and part of what he has done is that he's used razzmatazz. Yes. But my point to the House of Emma 
speaking to you as a donkey. Mm. Whoa. Is this that uh, you're in a trance and you can continue being in the trance if you so wish. Mm. And uh, you have not been called out because the House of Bishops and the holders of the moral voice have not spoken. Yeah. Uh, it's because they are also beholden themselves. Yeah. Yeah. And that is the reason why unprintable mm. acts have mm. been visited upon yes. you. Yes. Mm. And uh, if you continue in the path that you are taking, and you're welcome to do so, uh, you'll find yourself in a very difficult place. And I'm not saying this to ask you to vote for Raila Odinga. I am voting for him myself. And the president will be voting for him. You can vote for William Ruto if you wish to. But as you're doing it, please don't ask Uhuru Kenyatta to give birth. That kind of insult is below the level of stupidity. And do not describe the anatomy of our mothers as you clap in space and do not desecrate certain spaces. Mm. To do so is foolish. Yeah. It is not stupid, it is a condition. And I think that that is what the voice from the donkey mm. is giving to you. Mm. Well, it is our hope that we have damaged some ignorance. We also hope that we have exposed the owners of the Ignorance Project. Remember, things are not as bad as they seem. Or are they?